Tonight on Wall to Wall Sports, delivered by Donato's, the Ohio State lacrosse team trying to go where no team has gone before. Plus, Central Ohio resident Jason Day making moves on moving day. We'll show you this putt that you don't want to miss. Wall to Wall Sports is delivered by Donato's, and that starts right now. From Central Ohio's sports leader, this is Wall to Wall Sports, delivered by Donato's Pizza. The man in the middle is here. Chris Worley, Ohio State's starting linebacker. Chris will anchor the Silver Bullet defense next season, and maybe one day he'll anchor the news, too. We'll explain that in just a minute. I believe this is the first time we've ever had our own 10 TV intern yeah. as a guest on Wall of 10. Should be fun. Hey there, welcome to Wall to Wall Sports, delivered by Donato's. I'm Dave Holmes. And I'm Kayla Anderson. Chris Worley is standing by, ready to conquer those 10 questions. But first, Special thanks to Donato's for being in the house tonight. Nothing better than some free pizza on a Saturday night. We are now joined by the starting middle linebacker on the silver bullet defense, our 10 TV intern, Chris <laughs> Worley. Chris, we're going to play a game called Wall of 10. Here's how it works. We have 10 topics. Some are Buckeye football. He's, scout he's scouting yeah, right he now. Yeah, he is. He's scouting <laughs> them out. Some are random. Okay, <laughs> Kayla's here to help you out. You ready to do this? I'm ready to do this. Okay, first thing first. The middle man. The hardest part about switching to middle linebacker is... Um, the expectations, you know, that you have, not just from the outside world, but also, um, you know, your teammates. You know, everyone's looking to you to, you know, get everyone lined up, make sure everyone's in the right defense, and basically looking at you as their leader. And, um, you know, me being a natural leader, it wasn't that hard, but it's also a culture shock being playing on outside. Was it at all a challenge, or do you actually embrace those challenges? Are you somebody who likes change once in a while? Oh, yeah, I love change. Uh, there's a bunch of, you know, posters throughout our facilities, our meeting rooms, the, the weight room. It says, you know, discomfort breeds growth. So um, I actually kind of embrace that since I've been there and change of positions as much as I, I have. Um, you know, it's just something I have to live by at yeah. this point. <laughs> Natural for it. All right, yeah. number two, Tiger Bite. Something I know you want to forget about, that Clemson game. Do you use it as motivation? <laughs> is it something you put behind? How much has that game played into this offseason? Sort of like a, a culture that's, that has been bred throughout the team. You know, um, you know, losing like that, no one wants to go out like that. So it's given everyone uh, sort of a, just like you said, it feels like you've been bitten and, mm -hmm. you know, you want to get rid of it like a mosquito bite. But the <laughs> only way to get rid of it is going out there and working it and making sure you're better in case you get put in that situation again. I know you try to erase it quickly, but is it, how tough is it really to forget about a game, um, you know, like that when you're in the college football playoffs? Uh, well, it, it took me, well, I'm still recovering from it. So, really? Um, you know, it's one of those things that never goes away until you basically hosting a tro trophy. And, right. Um, as college football can see, it's, it's very hard with the new playoff format. So, um, you know, at this point, we're just kind of embracing the grind of getting back to where we were mm -hmm. to making sure that we can play better than we did. All right, let's perk it up here. Yes. <laughs> I'm getting sad here. Okay. <laughs> Urban Secret. What's something our viewers would be surprised to learn about Urban Meyer? Something you maybe know that the rest of us would be surprised. One thing that a lot of people don't know is that, you know, he kind of have a little bit of, you know, Urban dance to, to himself. Oh, really? Urban dance? Yeah. He's got a little hip on his Yeah, he got a little, really? a little hip hop dance within <laughs> him. Uh, he tries to bring it out behind closed doors, like after we won the game. He'll like pull me to the side, like, so, so what's that little dance that you guys Can are you doing? Can you show us? Yeah, what, what, so, like, um, what's an urban step, maybe? Um, you know, I picture this. So, so yeah, what, what, what exactly. is it? Yeah, but it's better than that. No, it's, it's like, so like when um, we lost to, to Michigan State yeah. and we had mm -hmm. to play the team up north, and, you know, Around that time of the year, everyone was doing a dab in the NFL. Dab, yeah, That's yeah, right. yeah. So like Cam Newton was dabbing, and yeah, everyone yeah. was dabbing, and you know, he's one of those guys that you know that he's not like stand up on the hip hop culture. Sure, so it's like sure. for him to even know that, you're like, why, why do he know that? Like, <laughs> why do he know what a dab is? So uh, he put me to the side after the game. We were walking up the tunnel together. He said, "I'm going to hit a dab in front of everyone." So I, I just looked at him like, "Okay." <laughs> So he's like, uh, just tell me what I got to do. So I just showed him how to do it. And we get to the locker room and they're playing music. We got that bad feeling out of our, out of our bodies that we just lost and we just yeah. won a game. Mm -hmm. And we kind of, you know, beat him really bad that year. So he came in there and he hit a dab and everyone just went berserk. Like, <laughs> like the whole locker room went crazy. Like, where did that come from? And I didn't think he was going to do it. So, uh, wow. you know, he, he proved a lot of people wrong. <laughs> I like it. 
<laughs> it's going to be hard yeah. to top that tonight on Wall of Ten. That's right? a great story, Chris. Every year, someone comes under the radar and yeah. becomes a household name. Who's someone that maybe fans haven't heard of, and this year they're going to say, wow, he's a player? You know, with a, with a place like Ohio State, uh, guys never really go, you know, mm -hmm. just under the radar. And mm -hmm. just, <laughs> they fall in from the time they're 16. Right. Like, yeah. Marshawn was a five star, high That's recruit, true. and. You know, you see this type of season he had, and people are like, oh, he came out of nowhere. No, he was a yeah. highly talented recruit, and Coach sure. Meyer talked about him as soon as he got on campus. Like, he didn't come out of nowhere. He just, you know, got healthy, basically, yeah. and played. So, um, if I was to say one guy that basically didn't play last year, I'd have to say ben Benjamin Victor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, playmaker. Playmaker. Yeah. Also, I would say um, our, our, our tight ends. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, Jake Houseman, Luke Farrell, which aren't talked about a lot. They aren't talked about know? a lot, but they're 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 guys that's getting better throughout practice. And you know, me playing linebacker, I have to you know play against those guys in practice throughout spring ball, and they've gotten a lot better since last year. So hopefully, they can help us out. Yeah. All right, moving on. Tar blood brothers here. <laughs> You're a Glenville guy, like about 20% of the Ohio State roster has been right? over the past couple decades. Who's the best football player in Glenville history? <laughs> I mean, there are guys. I mean, I'll give you Dante Whitner, Troy Smith, Cardell Jones, Marshawn Lattimore. I mean, there there are a lot out there. I have to say, three guys. Okay. Um, first was back in the day, before any of us were born. Um, his name was we call him Shields. Okay. <laughs> Um, he played quarterback, and he was a highly talented recruit. Um, just didn't, things didn't pan out for him um, throughout his life, but he was one of them. Of course, Ted Ginn Jr. All right. And also um, Darius Hiley. We call him Superman. Nice. In, in the Glenville neighborhood. Uh, he was one of those guys that he came here, ended up um, getting kicked out of school, and, you know, another guy that things didn't go well for him. But coming out of Glenville, you know, he's definitely a legend. Did you have a favorite player growing up? Um, you said you weren't a Browns fan specifically, but you followed a lot of individual players. Uh, yeah, so um, me and Marshawn, you know, we grew up playing football together, so we both played running back. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, so I used to watch um, Jim Brown highlights, yeah. uh, Water Payton highlights, O.J. Simpson, yeah. you know, all, those, all those type of guys. But I used to always, also watch defenders, so. My favorite linebackers of all time was Lawrence Taylor, nice. um, Ray Lewis, of course. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. love the way he plays the game. But as far as DBs, you know, Sean Taylor, he was he was one of those guys bad man. Yeah, he can hit. That, I, bad man. that I loved watching play and loved studying tape. So, and um, you know, for playmaking wise, you know, and swag, I have to give it to Deion Sanders. So yeah, I have a, I have a few players. You got that, a few. Yeah, yeah. I have a few players. I'll, that I, just I love like watching. it though. That's a good handful. Okay. Let's talk about the 216. You're a Cleveland guy. <laughs> will the Cavs repeat as champions? Why or why not? Yes, sir. And they will because at the end of the day, they have a bad man in front of charge <laughs> yes. by the name of LeBron James. Yeah. So hopefully, uh, you know, after the season pans out, you know, we have another parade in the 216. Talk about a team that has fun, man. The Cavs. The <laughs> yes. Cavs have fun. Yeah, the handshakes. Do you guys yeah. have those handshakes at OSU? Do you guys uh, have any of those? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't have as much time to do handshakes. Yeah, right? Because the college game is, is so much up-tempo offense. Yeah. It's like, oh, you made a play? You better hurry up and get back home. And exactly. Get another play, so. <laughs> you got another one. <laughs> All right, man on the mic here. You're majoring in communications, an intern of ours. Who is your favorite sports broadcaster when you watch TV and say, oh, I like that guy? Stephen A. Smith is just a crazy guy that I just uh -huh. love watching. Like, uh -huh. um, I like Max Kellerman, um, Kerry Champion. Mm -hmm. um, who else? I love Skip. I haven't watched him so much since he's been on Fox. Yeah. It's, so you like kind of like the opinionated people, like the people that kind of just have their opinions, aren't yeah, afraid yeah. to share them. Yeah. That's I mean, how. That's how. That's how. In my opinion, that's how it should be. Sure. Um, you know. Um, Sports is always a debate. It's always a debate. Right. It's always a debate. So um, do you want to be on TV when your football career is done? Is that the goal? Uh, that's one of the goals. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a few, but that's definitely one of the goals, and um, hopefully, I can get there. Well. Once Kayla gives you a letter of recommendation, yeah, you'll be you're fine. In. All right, best dressed buck. Who is the best dressed guy on this Ohio State football team? I'm taking yourself out of it. Taking me out? Yeah, take you out of it. Who's take got the? You out of all right, it. I'm definitely one A. <laughs> um, okay. Who's one B? One B. There's a few guys. Um, you know, Paris Campbell can dress. Joe Burrow. No, I, I, I've heard is some. He the worst I've, I've, I've heard rumors. He, he about may be the worst. He may oh be the worst. my god. That's what I've he heard. I've heard people say Joe Burrow shows up. <laughs> In yeah. some stuff that just makes your stomach turn. Yeah, Joe Burrow. No, Joe Burrow's 
<laughs> the bottom of the bottom. <laughs> uh, who's that? Some other people. Um, Parrish, you know, Wayne Davis could dress. Hmm. Um, Jalen can dress. Uh, Taekwon Tracy. There's, there's, there's guys that can dress, but I'm definitely the best dressed. Okay, you got it. <laughs> on record right here. The best dress. Yeah, I figured that much. Okay, last supper. Let's say it's your last day on earth. You can eat whatever you want. The football diet's done. Okay. Yeah. So what are, you, what are your three meals? What are we doing on your last day? Eat what you want. Uh, my mom's macaroni and cheese. Oh. Okay. It has to be on there. Yum. Um, Jalen Holmes' mother's nachos, which Ooh. is like crazy. Like her nachos, like she needs to patent them and go see them. Like, they're crazy. And I have to say some good old tender ribs. Mm. Good. I love ribs. So. Those are three like yeah. exactly like perfect You're meals. breaking your diet. What are you doing, <laughs> Kayla? Man, I'm taking macaroni and cheese, yeah. pizza, and fries okay. for sure. And okay. yeah. Donato's pizza, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, last question. One nice thing. Oh, goodness. We live in a polarized time politically and all sorts of stuff. Can you say one nice thing about Michigan to finish up this show, just to bring people together, Chris? Uh, <laughs> well, at least they're in America. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there. That could be a nice thing I could say about them. Man, what a perfect way to sum it <laughs> They up. are Americans, folks. Absolutely. <laughs> he didn't say Michigan, by the way. He's only going to no, say that team up north. No, he did not. Well, that Chris, team up north. Thank you so much for coming in. And here's a tip, since you are just starting your internship, yes. whatever Dom Tiberi says, yes. Make sure you do the opposite. Okay. And, and you'll be just fine, man. You'll okay. be perfect. Thanks so much, Chris. <laughs> no problem. Well, coming up next on Waddlewell Sports, delivered by Donato's, the Ohio State lacrosse team trying to move on to the final four of the NCAA tournament. Stay with us.